Hey everyone, it's Cassie here and today I want to talk to you a little bit about getting your Google Classroom all structured and ready and organized for the new year. So I'm going to show you some of that and then I'll show you how you can customize your Google Classroom headers. So I've been seeing all over Pinterest and Instagram, everyone making their virtual classrooms so cute and using bitmojis or other avatars or pictures. And so I was going to walk you through that and I have a template that you can use to get started with that too. So before we get started on actually showing you how to customize your headers for your Google Classroom, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the importance of thinking ahead and kind of how you could structure your classroom. So you just need to kind of think about what you're going to be doing this year, what classes you're going to be having, what kind of systems you're going to be using in your classroom, and the blog post will walk you through step by step some questions or just some ways to get yourself thinking about what you're going to need for your classroom. So here's an example of one. So I have a different class for my morning class and then I have a switch class, so there's a different class for them. And then other than that, I have some other classes. They're not really classes because they're not different students, but it's a, an, an area that I can use to put all of the resources and information for things that we do all the time. So for example, one of the things that we did in the classroom every single day was some math fact mastery activities. And so if you have your own class with that stuff in it, it doesn't get all mixed up with your regular classes and your regular coursework that's going down your feet. So you might have a separate class for something like that, or if you have a warm up that you do every day, for example, we had we did our lots of math every single morning when we first got to school. So that can be in its own class as well. So I kind of hate how they're all called classes because it gets, it gets a little confusing when you're talking about it like I am right now. But you could have one set up for challenges. If your school has a retake policy, you can have a whole Google Classroom just set up for that. And so think about how you want to organize your Google Classroom and how you want kids to access all of the different information and things that they need throughout the day. So now that you've thought about that, I'm going to show you how you can customize them and just change the way they look. So for example, if you click on math manipulatives, you can see that I've customized this one to just look like some math manipulatives. So um, you can get the file just by clicking below. It'll force you to make a copy and you'll get this file that's backdrop. And the first is just kind of an example that I was using. So if you see, if you look at this, you can see I put a bitmoji on there. I have a desk. I have a chalkboard with some inspirational sayings. And this header is going to be for the facts, our math fact, fact mastery system that we have. So the next one is a blank one. And this is where you can change the colors and kind of get the backdrop ready to go. So this is just some shapes that I made and you can change the colors. I wanted to show you a really cool way to get the exact colors that you want. So if you just go right here to the fill color tool on Google Slides, you can see that there's a lot of colors, but I don't, they're not like the trendy, cute colors. So I wanted to show you how you can get other colors that you might need. So for example, let's say that we are using this Bitmoji right here. So I'm just gonna paste it on. And I wanna get maybe that purple color. So what you can do is get a extension called Color Pick Eyedropper. So if you just Google Color Pick Eyedropper, you'll see that it is an extension and you just add it to Chrome. When you add it to Chrome, it comes up here with all of your other extensions next to your Bitmojis. So when you're ready to use it, all you have to do is find the, find whatever you want to pull the color from, then you click that extension and it's going to pull up this little pop-up thingy. And then if you just scroll down to the color that you want, you'll notice the color is populating right there inside of that pop-up. So just scroll till you find the color that you want. Maybe I like that pink color and then just click. It will populate that hex code and you can just press control C to copy it. And then you immediately need to exit out. Okay. So now let's say we want to change the background to that purple color. I can go up to this fill and then I can go down here to where it says custom and choose that plus sign. And then all I have to do is press control V to paste that hex code there and it'll give you my exact color that I wanted. And so you can do that for the walls or you can do that for the floor if you want to have a different color floor or whatever. But now I'm going to show you how easy it is to kind of 
create one of these like virtual classroom setups. And I did this in just like a few minutes. So if you spend more time, you can make it really cute. But all you need to do is click on insert image and then you can click search the web. Over here, it's gonna pop up Google images and all you have to do is type what you're looking for. So maybe you want a desk. Now, a trick is if you want it to have a transparent background, which you do so it doesn't you know, interfere with your room, you can put desk PNG. A PNG is a file that often has a transparent background or you can just type in transparent, but that will help you find exactly what you're looking for and then just kind of search through and see if you can find one that has the correct um, way of sitting so that it fits in your room right. So that one's kind of ugly, but <laughs> but we'll leave it just for time's sake. And then you can get the other things that you need. So um, images, search the web, maybe you want a bookshelf. I know you guys are going to make a much cuter version that I'm making here. So let's say this one and we'll insert it. Hopefully it's transparent and it is again not too cute. I'm I'm getting a little disappointed with my design skills here. So take your time and make yours cute. I do want to show you one more thing that you can do to add your Bitmoji. So if you have your Bitmoji extension you can just click it to pop it up and then you can find one that you like or that matches the theme of your classroom. Maybe you're a music teacher. And one thing you can do, instead of copying and pasting it or saving it as an image and then importing it in, you can literally just click it and drag it right onto your slide. And now you have it. So, okay, so let's say you're done designing and yours looks super cute. Now it's time to make it the backdrop of your Google Classroom header. So all you're gonna do is click File, Download, and then download it as a PNG. If you have multiple backdrops that you're making, you're just gonna have to do it separately. Um, so you can see here, whenever I set up my class, I have um, a different backdrop for each one of them. And so I just did that same step that I just showed you six different times. So let's say we're going to make our new backdrop for this group. So right here, when you get into your classroom, you can see where it says upload photo. And then all you have to do is get that photo and it'll go in your downloads because that's where it's probably is defaulted to go. So there it goes, here it comes. And then you just kind of have to remeasure it. So I like to put it up in the corner and then just drag the other corner and let go when it gets to around the end. It may not fit perfectly, but. There we go, then click select class theme and it will automatically put it there. Now it's a little disappointing that you get this overlay on top of it, see how it kind of grays it out and it's not as pretty as it was, but that's just the way it is. There's nothing you can do about that, except for maybe contact Google and suggest that they change that to where we have the option of what color overlays we want. So one other thing in the blog that I talk about is color coding your Google Classroom in order to make to kind of provide some visual cues when you're looking at a lot of things and it just helps you to be a little bit more efficient. So if you want to use color coding, then what I would suggest is you create a color for each of your classes or each of your sections and then you can go into your Google Classroom and color code your folders the same way. So I am into my classroom and I can see all of those different classes that I have. So let's say the facts, maybe I want it to be red. So all I have to do is right click and then click change color and then I can click that color there. And so you can make your Google Classroom header correspond with the classroom folder that that data is going to go into. So hopefully this gave you a little inspiration to get your Google Classroom organized or at least start thinking about how you can set up and structure your Google Classroom so that um, when you're ready to start teaching, you have everything organized and it keeps it to where the learning happens a lot more easily because the students know exactly where to go for whatever they need. The worst thing about Google Classroom is when your feed, your classwork stream gets like three miles long and you have to try to find something you were working on a couple weeks ago and scroll forever. So really organizing your homepage and all of your classes will make that a thing of the past. 
So anyways, I hope you have a great week. And if you make your own, I'd love to see it. You can tag me on Instagram at Cassie Nowak Teach. Bye.